Hey everyone, it's Dan from Money Basics here. I thought I'd make a quick video showing you how to use a monthly budget template that's put out from, uh, it's a Google Sheets template. It's what I use and my fiance use to track our monthly budgets. There's a number of apps out there that'll let you do the same sort of thing, um, but we really like this thing. It's, it's free, it's fairly easy to use, and uh, what I've done here is I've gone ahead and created a template that uh, you could just go ahead and download and use. I'll post it in the description um, and that way it'll be set to go. Now there's a lot of customization you can do here to sort of make this fit your needs. Um, so I've created this template but you're able to change it. So let's get going and I'll show you what to do and how to make this work. So this is a monthly budget and there's two ways you can do this. You can do this the way I do it which is sort of retrospectively look back at the month that you just had and punch in your expenses versus your income and spits out a budget. So it's kind of a review of the month before or you can do it like my fiance does where she just punches it in as she goes uh, and then she can track if she's going you know, according to schedule or if she's maybe off track as far as her budget goes. So the way the spreadsheet works is all of these pinkish red sections that you see, these are all areas that you can go ahead and edit. If it's not pinkish red, don't touch it because there's all these pre-programmed formulas in here. And if you start messing with that, it's not gonna work very well. So starting at the top here, there's some instructions. You can read them or you can just listen to me and I'll walk you through it. The first thing you wanna do is put your starting balance. So this would be that number that's in your bank account or possibly the combined number between your, your checking and your savings account. Um, let's just say hypothetically, you've got $1,000 sitting in your checking in your savings account. And what you're seeing here is the result of um, the formulas sort of working, doing their thing. And this is gonna update as we punch in information. And you got a nice little graph here. This is gonna be more important to us once we've put in all the information. Scroll down a little bit, you'll see your expenses and your income. This templated thing that I've done for you is I've added all of these titles here. And these are all the various things that we're gonna input as far as expenses, the things that cost us money. And I'm just doing a hypothetical uh, sort of estimate here. This is gonna change for you and you're gonna have to update this accordingly. But these are all um, budgeted items that I've taken and I've put in here. Uh, once again, random assumptions, this won't be true for every person. What you're gonna see here um, is the planned expenses. So this is what this person is expecting to spend throughout the month. How do you come up with planned expenses? Well, probably the best way is to go over the last couple of months, look for some typical months for you, maybe three or four, the more you do, the better, and find average numbers of what you normally spend on each of these items. Now these can maybe be sort of vague and you might wanna change the names and that's easy. You just double click and type in whatever you want. I'm gonna keep it groceries for our purposes here. And then you put in the number that you intend to uh, spend that month. The actual indifference, don't worry about that. That's gonna auto populate. If you touch it, you'll mess up formulas, so don't touch it. Um, you may wanna change some of these. So for example, I have utilities here. So for me, in my budget, my personal budget, utilities to me, that means my natural gas, that means my electricity, that's my water. Uh, am I missing any? Nope, that should be everything. Um, so that's all these things. If you wanted to make separate line items for each one, you could definitely do that. The reason I don't is you're only allowed so many slots for options here. If you if you start adding to that, then it's going to screw up your formulas. And don't worry, this is going to be quite simple when we start inputting things. So I have it like this. If you wanted to add more line items and you, you re you've run out of space, that's fine. One way around that is to start combining some of these things a little bit. Uh, so maybe you just add restaurants and groceries as one thing. So maybe you erase the restaurants line and instead of groceries, you just put food and then whatever your, your plan budget for those two things combined, you just add them together, right? Uh, so you can find some efficiencies there um, just combining these things. Okay, we'll, we'll look at what that looks like a little more specifically as we get into the next page. Now on the income side of things, uh, this is every source of money that's coming in. Once again, the best way to figure out your planned income is look at what your average last couple of months have been uh, and then take the average and plug it in here. For many people, you're probably only gonna have one major line item here, which is your paycheck. Uh, and this would be for the month, remember. So let's say I get paid $2,000 every two weeks. I just add that by however many paychecks I'm expecting to get that month. In this case, I've put two because there's you know two, 
two week periods in most months, but every now and then you're going to get an extra paycheck if it if that's the way it lands. Um, so you can figure the math out on that, or you can just sort of lowball yourself and just put this number in. Um, and then any other thing that you might have, you you just sort of plug that in there. All right, now here comes the crazy part. All right, so once we've got all these things set, or if you're just using my template, just update your own numbers to what you expect. Now follow my cursor here, the bottom left, scroll down. There's a tab here called transactions. We are currently in summary. Click on transactions. This is where you actually put in the stuff that, that you do, right? And you can either do this like I do at the end of the month, go back, go through your credit card statement, go through your bank statement and add in every single line item for expenses. Um, or you can just do this as you go. If you double click, you'll get your calendar here. Um, or you can just manually punch in the date. So we're clearly not the year 2000, so 2023. And then it should update. Now I double click, you see I'm in the year 2023. And now I can just pick whatever the date is today. Today is January 24th. Okay, so what I'll do is simply go through my credit card statement and my bank account, basically anywhere that I would have spent money, uh, even if it's cash, whatever. And as I spend it, I'll track that. So let's say um, I spent, today I went to the grocery store, I spent $100 on groceries. Okay, description. You can put whatever you want here, it doesn't really matter. Let's say I went to Sobeys, bought some groceries. Here, I'll go to category and I will pick groceries, okay? Don't mind this home thing, that's a little error. Uh, let's say today I also went to, oops, sorry, I got a mistake here. Let's say today I also uh, happened to buy gas for my car and I put in $60. Okay, I put in the amount, description. I like to put where I get these things. So let's say I went to Costco. It really doesn't matter. This just gives you clarity when you're looking back at your budget to see you know, what and where you spent your money. So my option here is gas, car, okay? Uh, and I would do this all the way through. If I spent, let's say for some reason, my mortgage came out today. That's not how you write 2023. 2023, let's say my mortgage came out today and my mortgage was... Uh, I pay, I don't know, let's say $800 bi-weekly. I could write mortgage or whatever. You could leave it blank if you want. And then here you will put do, 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 mortgage, okay? Uh, so on and so forth, all the way down. Now, like I said, you can do this the day of in real time, um, or you can just do this at the end of the month. To be more accurate, it would probably be best to do this day by day. And you can you can have this app saved on, on sheets on your phone to just have it readily available. You don't have to come to the computer every time you do this. Now on the income side, you'll do the same exact thing. Um, so let's just say back in January uh, 18th, that was payday, okay? And I make uh, $2,000 a paycheck. Look at me, I'm rich. I could say paycheck and the category is paycheck, okay? And then uh, let's say I actually uh, make interest from my bank, okay? Because I'm with EQ Bank and EQ Bank is great. I made $12 in interest. I'll write EQ Bank, you don't have to, that can remain blank and you'll put interest, okay? Now you'll do that so on and so forth. As things come up, you'll punch them in. You'll click over to summary and you'll see how this is updating for us. So groceries, I plan to spend $400 in a month. So far I've spent $100. Uh, that means I'm currently $300 ahead of what I've budgeted for, okay? And it does that on every single line item. Um, so utilities, I haven't punched anything in there. I've punched in mortgage, okay? So I expect to spend $1,600 per month in mortgage. Uh, currently, I've had one mortgage payment, so I'm ahead of schedule. And you'll see that for every single line item. So you can see as I punch things in, this is going to populate. Same with the pay side, okay? Now, this is a monthly uh budget. So for paycheck, I plan to make $4,000. I've currently only gotten one paycheck. So it shows me negative $2,000. That's just because the month isn't over. I haven't gotten my second paycheck yet. Okay. I understand my dates are a little off here, but I think you get the point. Uh, and then my interest is here as well. So now you'll see the top here has also updated. So my starting balance, I had $1,000 in my bank account. Okay, and this does the math for you. It shows what you've spent. So here's my expenses, okay, and here's my income. So it does my actual expenses versus my actual income, and it spits out the total of what's left in my bank account at the end here, 
Okay, so I started with a thousand bucks. I've saved a thousand and fifty-two dollars this month, which means this month I have a one hundred and five percent increase in my total savings. And you can see that charted in the graph here. Okay, so that's essentially the gist of how you run Google Sheets. Um, so my fiance, she'll do this. Basically, she'll go to the grocery store. We'll buy a couple of things, and either in the store or like. As we're walking out to the car, she'll pull this up and punch in what she spent at the grocery store, $40 at Sobeys. She'll punch that in as a grocery item, and she would just add in a line item here. Um, that's that's a really, really good way because it makes sure that you're on track, and this is basically how most budgeting apps work. Now, that being said, this isn't the only budgeting app that's out there. Um, there's some that can link up with bank accounts that do a pretty decent job. I personally like this. I like the hands-on approach. It makes me mindful. It makes me think about my money. Uh, so when I'm spending money on stupid stuff, I could really be mindful of that and see it happening in real time. And then I know that I might need to sort of curve my spending or adjust my habits. Um, so it literally forces me to slow down for a second and just think about it, which at the end result of that is I end up being a little more frugal with my money so I end up having more money at the end of the day. Budgeting is a complete game changer. This is how you build wealth. This is how you make sure you're not spending more than you're making or if you happen to be running a little bit behind schedule here and you're, you are spending more than you're making you can give yourself a bit of a heads up so you could reel yourself in and change course instead of just accumulating debt. Uh, so I highly recommend everybody should be doing budgeting or at least expense tracking, which is like I do looking back at the month before and, and counting all of this stuff after the fact. Um, it, it's like creating a roadmap, right? If you don't have a plan to get where you're trying to go, you're not likely to succeed. It's like people who go to the gym and just sort of do whatever. Those are rarely the people that get absolutely jacked because they don't have a plan and they're not attacking something with, with focus and direction. This is the same thing for your money. It's creating a plan and making sure you stick to it and it's holding you accountable. It shouldn't be a stressful thing because it's simple math. And if you play within the boundaries of that simple math, you're going to be giving yourself permission to buy the stuff that you want without having to stress about it. So check it out. The links will be uh, posted in the description. I highly recommend you at least give it a try. There's a bit of a learning curve. Don't be afraid of it. Just play with it. If you have any questions at all, reach out, send us a message, send us an email. I'd be happy to walk you through this. All right, have a good one. It's all about the money. It's all about the